Hello everyone, Cody here, and today I'm going to show you how to make a simple abstract painting. And by simple I mean almost even easier than making a poured acrylic painting or poured abstract painting. And when I say simple, I mean simple. Now, I actually discovered this painting method uh, purely by accident. And I'll kind of tell you how I, I made or found it, and then I'll kind of explain it. So recently I was painting a large painting, uh, well, fairly large, about uh, 30 inches by 48 inches. So a decent sized painting, let's say. And uh, while I was painting this painting, uh, there was a bunch of excess paint because I was, was using a lot and I scraped off the excess and there was this big pool of paint left over from this painting that I had made. And I really hate wasting paint, although I mean, it, it's kind of, it kind of happens when you make these large paintings or it happens if you use a lot of paint like I tend to use. Um... And so because there was this huge puddle of paint, I didn't want it to go to waste. And so I looked around and I saw that I had a canvas sheet, uh, which if you don't know what it is, it's literally exact what it sounds. You can buy sheets of canvas, small ones, uh, in a pad. So kind of like if you bought a pad of watercolor paper or if you bought a, you know, a, a, a pack of papers or something, I don't know, uh, but you can buy sheets of canvas. So it's, it's canvas, but it's just little sheets about the size of a piece of paper or, or slightly bigger. Well, anyway, uh, so that's about all I had on hand. And so I took the painting and I put it face down, well, I took the canvas, sorry, put it face down into the paint and pressed it into the paint. And then I slowly peeled it off. And what happened was the paint actually, you know, filled the whole canvas, but it looked really cool because it was, you know, like a light blue, a dark blue and some black. And, uh, and I took that and I, and I pressed it and I pulled it off and it made this design. So here, you can see uh, at about 249, you can see that I placed, well, so anyway, fast forward, and uh, that painting actually sold a few days ago. And so I was like, wow, that, you know, and I, I showed a bunch of people and they actually liked it a lot. So here, what I did was, instead of just wasting it, I decided, what if I put the paint on one piece of paper and then take another piece of paper Instead of canvas sheet, we're using paper, sorry. Uh, but I'm using watercolor paper here. I put the paint on there and then take another sheet and then put it on top. And so it sandwiches them and presses them together. So you kind of get a lot of use out of the paint because not only are you getting it on one painting, but you're getting it on a second. So then I take those two papers and I flatten them with a board um, you can use wood, you can use foam. The reason I do that is because it, it kind of evenly distributes the paint um, and kind of helps you spread it out. Now, if you don't cover the whole paper in paint, there's going to be gaps and you're going to see that when I lift this off. So then I take that painting, that paper, and I peel it off. And it leaves this really cool, almost wave, almost fire design. That you kind of see here on the paper and so I tested this the other day um, before I did this this is actually the second time I've done it and it turned out pretty decent now one turned out better than the other but I, th I thought about it and if I even get one decent painting out of the two it was worth it because then I'm not wasting just paint right I can possibly get two identical pieces out of doing this one process. And if you stop and think about it for just a moment, 
it's a very genius business model. If you're making a set for yourself, if you're just looking to make a simple abstract painting uh, for yourself, it's a very easy thing. You put paint on a piece of paper or a canvas sheet or even a canvas, a regular canvas, and then you, you know you put paint all over it, and then you press down on it with something heavy, and then you peel it off, right? And it's going to fill that whole painting. Well, if you just use a board or if you just use plastic wrap, because initially that's kind of where I had the idea um, was using plastic wrap on there. But if you just use uh, a board or if you use plastic wrap, the problem is, is that it it doesn't give you the same effect as this. And you're actually going to see that in a few minutes um, because I did use plastic wrap on the other one to kind of show you two different effects you can get out of this. But anyway, coming back to this, if you're making art for your, you know, for yourself, for your own home or something, um, what's nice about it is that you're going to get two pieces out of it. So then you can kind of, you know, frame those pieces side by side. And then it's got this cool, almost mirror effect, right? It's pretty badass. Excuse my language. I'm sorry. Um, but uh, it's actually really cool. And so... By doing this, by, by taking these two surfaces and peeling them apart, it gives you two almost mirrored pieces. And I think that the effect out of it, one, the effect of, of the fiery wave looking thing is actually really cool. But two, the effect of having two identical pieces that you can kind of put up next to each other, um, I think it, it just gives it that kind of like wow factor, right? And so when I thought of this the other day and I did it, I was so impressed with the results. Now, like I said, the first one actually turned out better than the second one because the second one had a bunch of missing paint on it. Um, and then when I tried to fill it in, it didn't look as good. Here, they're pretty close to each other. So they could have, I could have gotten away with it looking pretty good. But you're going to see that on the second one, I actually created a different design with the uh, with the with a piece of plastic, so you'll see that in just a moment. Um, but here I was just kind of touching up the, you know, all the empty spots. And the thing with you know using canvas sheets or paper is that if you get a lot of paint around the edges, it seals to the surface, and it sucks to get off. So you want to put it on something where it can dry without it. Uh, basically sealing to the surface because I've already had that happen multiple times. So here I've got the second sheet. Again, looks pretty close to the first one, but um, I didn't want to use my hand to, you know, fill in the gaps. Again, this is a new technique to me, but uh, I wanted to share it because I think, it, again, it's a very simple way to make abstract art. Um, so here I'm trying to use a, a small spatula, but the problem is, is that the design looks different than the waves that are there, right? So it, it started putting like a round indent into the painting. So I would not recommend using that. And then my gloves, my gloves were just picking up the other colors. So I was thinking about it for a moment and I was trying to figure out what I could use to smear those colors. So I was looking around, and at first I didn't see anything. Uh, but then I realized, hey, I could use something that, you know, isn't going to kind of leave a straight edge. So then you can see that I have the plastic here at about 857. And I just start dabbing the plastic into the paint. Now, obviously, that creates a much different design than the one that was already on there. And after I started doing it for a while, I realized that I couldn't have the two designs on there at the same time. I mean, I could have, right? It was my choice. And I apologize if you hear that train in the background. But uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, in all good consciousness, have the two different designs because it just looked weird. Uh, so then I just started taking that paint and dabbing it around to really just kind of mix it in. And it really actually just made its own unique painting. So out of this, I mean, I had the two that looked almost identical. But then 
I kind of created this actual, like this completely other piece by the end, by the time I was done with it. And you'll see it here in just about a moment uh, that by the time I was done with it, with the whole stippling thing, it, uh, it actually made its own piece. And again, this is another easy way to make abstracts. I mean, really, we only used one technique and then just kind of cloned it. But uh, I mean, honestly, I've seen a lot of, you know, techniques to make abstract art. And, you know, even pouring, you know, there's a lot of prep work. But this, I literally just put the paint on there, <laughs> put the two, and peeled them off. So you literally made two paintings at one. So... I don't know if it gets much easier than that, honestly. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I thought it was pretty cool, actually. I was kind of impressed with the way that it turned out. And so I'm going to set them out to dry, and then I'm going to show you uh, what they look like. So I'm just going to grab them here, and then I will put them into view where you can see them. And then that's pretty much it. So there they are. Uh, didn't fit that way, so I had to turn it. But uh, oh, and those colors—the orange, yellow, dark blue, and black—I um, and white I used because I was trying to film another video for a Pollock style painting. But anyway, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm going to show you a close-up so you can kind of see the final product. But uh, there's not really anything else to it. So I hope you enjoyed this video on making simple abstract paintings and. Uh, you know, hopefully if you found it useful, like, rate, share, subscribe, and all that cool stuff. All right? Take care, guys. Bye.